Okay, so now we're looking at another water distribution question, and now we're still looking at a single loop. So we're relating to the FE, so it's gonna be a simple single loop, but realistically, a water distribution system is gonna have multiple loops. For example, we have one loop here, another loop, another loop, and so on. And these are our pipes, so we have pipes, so we have one, two, three loops but we're looking at an fe type question so we want to simplify this to be a question around three to five minutes so this is kind of a long one but it will reinforce some concepts when you're analyzing a water distribution system so let's read the question slowly together we know we have a flow rate of 17.5 cfs enters the pipe system at a as shown so we have the flow rate entering here at a and exits at B and C, so it's gonna exit at B and C, pipe data is given in the table below. So for pipe A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A, this is A, B, this is B, C, this is C, D, this is D, A. And we're given the friction factors, so these are all the same. And let me ask you one question, when you're given the friction factor, what equation do you think of? So I think of the Darcy, the Darcy-Weisbach equation, which relates the head loss due to flow right so we're going to use that as we proceed so we know we're also given the length for each pipe we're given the diameter so these stay the same bc and cd this is bc this is cd the diameters here are the same these are different and we're given the velocities but we're not given this velocity in pipe bc but we're given the rest of the velocities here so now let's go down read the question we know assuming the elevations assuming the pipes are all at the same elevation so this is not quite realistic but this is an assumption we're making meaning at each node node a node b node c and node d the elevations are the same we have no change in elevations and we're gonna say the head loss in feet in pipe bc is most nearly what so where's this pipe pipe bc it's gonna be this one so we want to find the head loss here head loss in pipe BC and that's what we want to find so let's write that as a find the head loss in pipe BC so what do we do for these water distribution single loop questions so for a single loop there's steps you should apply the first thing I do is denote the direction of flow so we're going to denote the flow direction. So let's look at our distribution system. We know we have 17.5 CFS coming in, right? We know whatever comes in has to come out. So this satisfies continuity, which is conservation, right? And this is at nodes. So continuity has to be satisfied at each node, meaning whatever comes in has to come out. The flow rate in is equals to the flow rate out and continuity has to also be satisfied for the overall system right so we have 17.5 cfs coming in so we know what comes out here and what comes out here has to sum sum to 17.5 cfs whatever what comes out here and here has to sum to 17.5 cfs so this might be half of 17.5 this might be half of 17.5 so that's continu continuity satisfied at a whole level at a system level and the nodes as well so that's an important concept we have to know as well so let's assume the flow direction this should be step number one so we're going we know this comes in at a obviously it has to come out at a here right too and pipe a b so the direction has to go this way and in a d the direction has to come go this way it can't come back in right because this total comes in it has to come out and come out so what happens here so does it go this way or this way I think it's gonna go this way right it makes sense for it to go this way it's like erect it's a nine degree angle and the flow has to go this way Pic picture this being two CFS let's say it, assuming it's two CFS two CFS has to go this way it can't come back this way right so that's the assumption there 
and it makes sense that it's gonna go to the right here so that's the flow in DC now what the tricky part is the flow in BC this is what's tricky and this is what we cannot essentially guess so we have to assume so we have to assume the flow in BC so what I assume there is going to be down so I assumed it goes from B to C so now we have all the flow rates assumed and I assumed from B to C the flow rate you could assume up so that's up to you for this one but these for AB AD and DC are obviously correct right these have to come out then this goes this way for DC this one you have to assume and once we calculate the head loss in BC if we get a negative answer we know we assume the incorrect direction so that will be shown as we proceed so after that what do we do for the same loop we're gonna denote the positive orientation so I'm gonna assume if the flow goes this way it's positive so if the flow goes clockwise it's positive if it goes this way it's gonna be negative so that's another assumption we're gonna make so after that we know what we have to do is apply the conservation of the head loss so we know the head loss the summation of the total head loss must equal to zero so let's write that down the summation of the total head loss in the overall distribution system for that loop must equal to zero so we know we're gonna have head loss in pipe a b we have head loss in pipe b c and that's what we're solving for right we're trying to find this the head loss in pipe b c and we also have head loss in this pipe head loss in pipe dc and we have here head loss in pipe da so we know we have head loss in each pipe and the summation of these must equal to zero so now let's denote this on the left side of the equation so we have the head loss in pipe ab plus the head loss in pipe bc note here they're both positive so ab we assume the floor is going this way so i'm going to go with the flow direction so i'm going to say if the flow is going this way we're going to say it's going to go clockwise right so i'm going to denote the head loss as positive for the head loss so the flow is going this way i'm going to denote the head loss as positive to stay consistent with my sign convention so it's going to be positive for ab for bc it goes down so it's gonna be clockwise as well so for BC it's positive now let's look at DC DC is gonna go this way so it's gonna be counterclockwise so it's gonna be negative so it's gonna be minus the head loss in DC and DA same thing it goes down so it's gonna be this way which is well counterclockwise so it's negative so negative head loss in DA and all of this equals to zero the summation that had lost must equal to zero so that's an important concept we have to know as well for the distribution system so after that we know what we need to find which part so this one is BC right we need to find the head loss in BC that's the question so let's rearrange this equation the head loss in BC is gonna equal to what the head loss in DC plus the head loss in DA I'm just moving these to the right side yeah and we do minus the head loss in AB okay so we have all of that that's the head loss in BC and this is the main equation we will use to solve for the head loss in BC but before we can proceed how can I find these head losses how so we know I referred at the very beginning we said we're given the friction factor we're given the length the diameter velocities what can we find we can find the head loss using the Darcy Weisbach equation so the Darcy Weisbach equation is on this page in the fluid section 183 in the new FE handbook 
So this is the equation. We take the friction factor divided by times the length over the diameter, velocity squared divided by 2g. And g here is 32.2 because we're looking at English units. So let's go back here. And we know, let's first look at this one, the head loss in dc. So just to be neat, as I do my solutions, so you can completely understand. So it's going to be the friction factor in dc, right? So all the friction factors are the same. So dc is this, cd, dc, same thing. So it's going to be 0 0.03. And we take L over D. What's the length in dc? The length in dc is going to be 200 feet. So 200 feet divided by my diameter in dc, which is the 36 inches, right, from above. So 36 inches, but don't forget, we have to convert it to feet. So I take 36 inches divided by 12. Because there's 12 inches in one foot, and we want feet, right? And after that, we take the velocity squared. What's the velocity in DC from above is 1.3. So you plug in 1.3 there. Feet per second. Units are good. Don't forget to square this. It's the velocity squared. Then we take 2 times the gravity, which is 32.2 feet per second squared. So we have all of that. Now we solve for the head loss in DC. And for that, you should get around 0 0.052 feet. So that's DC, right? Let's highlight what we took care of. This is good. Now let's do DA. So the head loss in DA, it's the same procedures. Same procedure here. It's the same friction factor for dA, but the length, does the length change? Yes, it's 250. So the length here is 250. So plug in 250 on top. We have the diameter. So we're looking at dA. The diameter here is quite large, so it's going to be 60 inches from above. So we take 60 divided by 12. And then we take the velocity. The velocity from above should be 1.2 feet per second. And we do 2 times g, which is 32.2 feet per second squared. Again, I'm just using the darcy weisbach equation to find the head loss due to flow for each pipe. So the head loss for dA is going to equal to 0 0.0335 feet. So we have that now, so let's highlight that as something we did. Now that AB is the last thing, the head loss in AB, same procedure, 0 0.03. So we take the length, the length stays the same as DA, so it's 250 feet, but the diameter is going to be the 24 inches from above divided by 12 so the diameter is 24 right this and the length is 250 and the velocity is 2 right from above so the velocity is going to be 2 feet per second squared divided by 2 times g which is 32.2 feet per second squared so I got into the habit of keeping the units right so keep all the units feet feet right everything looks good seconds seconds and this we convert it to feet right this is in feet so we convert it that diameter to feet which we have to do be careful with that so the head loss in AB is gonna equal to around 0 0.233 feet so now we've done all of the head loss and we just plug in this equation above so the head loss in BC, which is what we want, is going to be the head loss in DC, which is 0 0.052 feet. And plus the head loss in DA, which is 0 0.0335 feet. And minus the head loss in AB, which is 0 0.233 feet. So now we can solve for that. The head loss in BC should equal to about, let me do the math just to double check. So we take that, 
plus 0 0.3C5 minus 0 0.233, you should get negative, so it's a negative answer, 0 0.1475. So what does this negative mean? We have this negative sign. So the negative just says we assume the wrong direction for that flow above, specifically for BC. That's what the negative means. So our correct answer is indeed the 0 0.1475. And this is feet. So this is the correct answer. And that negative just tells us if we look above that the flow is not actually going down from B to C. The flow is not going this way. So the flow is going to actually go up this way. It's going to go from C to B. And we can also prove this by doing something specifically by looking at the head loss. So what's, let's look at initially, we know this comes in, right, at A. Does it go this way or this way? So it, the flow we know is going to travel in the path of least resistance. So here... The head loss in DA and AB, what is that? So the head loss in DA is 0 0.0335. The head loss in AB is much greater, is 0 0.233 feet. So since DA is less than AB, this means the flow is going to travel this way, right? In the path of least resistance, so we have least resistance here. We have less head loss in DA than AB. So the flow comes in, it goes this way. Obviously it has to go this way. Then at C, it's gonna go up. If, let's say, if we switch our, around, if AB had a greater head loss than DA, the flow would go, if it had a less head loss, sorry, if AB had a head loss less than DA, the flow would go this way then go down here so it would go down but we know based on this question the flow is going to travel in the path of least resistance so it's going to go this way so that's all for this one and my challenge for you is to solve for the flow coming out at b and c so what is the flow coming out at b and what is the flow coming out at c so the hint here is to use the nodal method for the flow rate and analyze each node and you're also given certain data here and I believe you can find the velocity as well for BC using the Darcy equation right so again find the flow here the flow here that comes out at B and C and that's all for this one I hope it helps